Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode on my Porsche 968. For those of you that are new to my channel, this Porsche 968 was a victim of the floods in the German Eiffel region about two years ago. It stood underwater up to roughly this level. Um, this interior has been completely refurbished. Everything is working. Everything is new. When I say everything, most of the things are working. Um, I still got a few small issues and needles to address, of which the biggest one in the previous episode was these headlights that were not popping. As you can see, they are upright at the moment, but they are in their service position. And if you look inside here, you can see I have removed the motors. What I wanted to show you is that I have taken these motors apart. So as you can see, this motor does have some weatherproofing on it. There's also a sheath on the back, which I've pulled off in order to get access to all these things. Um, this motor looks reasonably well. The reason it does is because I cleaned it and I serviced it in the hopes that it would work. But this gives you a bit more of a view of what it looked like. This is the good one. This is the one I could turn by hand. This is the one that was frozen solid. I managed to get it to work, as you can see. But um, still, it's not firing up. So I think the circuits are fried. And if you look really closely in here, you can see all the oxidation that is inside this uh, motor unit. All this stuff is rusted. This is all rusted out. Now, I cleaned the other one, like I said. I cleaned off, off all of this rust. I cleaned the contact points. I cleaned as much as I could in here. I even re-greased the mechanism inside here, which you can easily pop off by just popping off this plastic cap. None of that worked, so I have ordered some used motors from uh, Patrick at Inline 4, which I should be getting very soon. I've also ordered all of the computers inside the car, except for the DME. So I'm just going to replace my airbag, ABS, cruise control and alarm system. Uh, because I'm pretty sure they all got, got water in them. They say some of them are weather sealed, but... I don't think they survived. And if they look anything like this on the inside, then I'm pretty sure they'll be toast. The other thing I wanted to show you is that my cubbyhole insert came. And if you remember, this guy is the one I tried to put in, which was a little bit too big. And this guy is the new version. If I line them up on top of one another, you can see this side lines up perfectly. You can see here at the back, the old oval dash without airbags has a much deeper reach. And on this side, you'll see that the one with the airbag is about a centimeter narrower than the one without an airbag. And the best news of all is this is brand new and it cost me all of 25 euro. So very happy with that find. Oh, and one more thing. Um, a lot of you guys have contacted me and said, hey, but this car wasn't in salt water. Why do you always refer to salt being in the car? Um, I guess it's a pronunciation thing. I'm not talking about salt, but I'm talking about silt. So silt is the clay substance that stays behind after all of the flood water has, has subsided. So I'm talking about silt and not salt. Right, so that's enough of the updates. What am I going to be doing in this episode? I have decided that it's time to tackle this engine. So I have all the parts I need to give this guy a major, major service. So I'm talking new spark plugs, new leads new distributor cap new distributor new belts new seals new water pump so my goal here is to replace every single serviceable item on the front of the engine so there's a lot that needs to happen i might not make it all in one episode but sit back relax and let's start working Right, with the car on the lift, the first thing we want to do is disconnect the battery again, as we will not be needing that for a while. And then um, I'm going to take off the distributor. I'm going to disconnect it from the coil here, and then we'll remove the covers. <laughs> So I have immediately discovered dirt that needs to be cleaned, as you can see there, and on top of this coil as well. But also, 
inside the distributor doesn't look all that fresh um, these are quite worn and if i feel the rotor here it's also quite rough so um, luckily i've got both of these guys new so we'll be replacing that i'm not too worried about the coil i think it's fine uh, but i'll clean it and i'll make sure it's ready to go back on the car as well Right, so let's have a look at this. Um, in essence, it's not too bad. I'm not really seeing anything really scary here. It's just very dirty. And I'm pretty sure that squeaking we heard the last time we started this motor was one of these bearings that just uh, gave out. Um, it will be either be this one or the one down there, the tensioner. Uh, it might be many of these things. So um, I'm just going to methodically take this thing apart. I'll put a link to a bunch of YouTube clips down here that I looked at to help me along. I'm also using the factory manual. So um, the one thing I wanted to show you that is different about a 968 is the fact that you have this very different tensioner. This is an automatic tensioner, and that is the thing that keeps the belt in tension. So um, that's unique to a 968. Um, and these are no longer available, but I do not think this is dead. And I did see some uh, news on, I believe it was Renless, that says these things will be coming available. So if I need one, I should be able to source one. For the rest, this is pretty much the same as an, as an S2 and very similar to a 2.5 and 2.7 litre 944. So what I'm going to do now is a little bit out of sequence for most of you, but I'm going to remove my spark plugs, spray some fogging oil down the cylinders. And the reason for that is because this engine has been standing still for 10 months. It's just a precaution. It's not necessary. You don't really need to do it, but it makes me feel better, especially since I don't quite know the condition of the engine and whether there's still some moisture somewhere and et cetera, et cetera. So I'll get that done. Then we'll get under the car, remove the starter, get the block onto top that center, put the lock in, and then we'll start pulling off all of these belts. <laughs> I'm removing this vanity cover on the fuel rail and the spark plug lead. The reason is because it's fouling the lead on this side. I couldn't put it out. It was hitting the edge of this cover. Uh, but what I wanted to also tell you is that there are these spacers. It's an aluminium spacer that sits underneath this cover. And uh, if you don't know it's there, you could lose it in the engine. This one actually only has one of them, but I believe there is a different solution from Porsche for this with rubber bungs. So um, I might just go to that or other, otherwise I'll have to find one of these spaces somewhere. But um, now we can take this cover off and then we can continue the work on these spark plugs. <music> So these are the spark plugs going from cylinder one, two, three, and four. They're not too bad. If you look on the inside, they're a little bit sooty, but I mean, this car hasn't been running properly for like a couple of years. So I think we're okay. Um, I'll put in new spark plugs, obviously, and I will also put in new plug leads. But now I'm going to get this block on top dead center and then get the flywheel lock in, and then we'll start tackling these belts. Uh. Okay. All right, let's get this thing on to top dead center. So what we're trying to do is to align this little notch here with that notch there. And then we have a fairly good chance of the motor being on top dead center. And then we need to do a final check downstairs. Almost. 
All right, so this should be it. Yeah, I would call that top dead center. Now we go underneath the car and double check on the flywheel. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, one thing that I am picking up on this car, which I didn't pick up on before, is there's quite an oil slick going down here. You can see how oily these brake lines are. All of this stuff is oil. So something on this car is leaking. I'm suspecting it is this guy, the power steering pump. It's most often what goes wrong, either the pump or these hydraulic lines. Uh, but that's a problem for another day. Where I want to get you behind this little rubber plug, if I open that up, I should be able to see the top dead center line. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver, unplug this, and see if we can see the top dead center mark. So I'm going to try and get the camera up into that hole. It's not going to be straightforward because I also rather would have a mirror, but I think, yeah that's the top dead center mark right there so i'm happy with that so now let's take off the starter motor and get the flywheel lock in <music> That the flywheel lock is installed we can go to the top again and start removing the belts so let's also just make sure that the engine is in fact locked so i'll put the uh, socket back onto the crankshaft pulley let me just get it on there and see if we can move it no she's locked which means we are safe so let's start removing belts all right, first thing is to remove this uh, tensioner and then also this roller, and then we should be able to pull this balance belt off. So I think I found something and that is also either S2 or 968 specific and that is this little guide here. This is actually stopping me from uh, getting the balance shaft belt out. So I'll need to remove this guide in order to get the belt out. So I'm going to quickly do that and then we have the balance belt off its spot. And what I wanted to show you is I now have the rollers on the bench and they're not too bad. This one is on its way out but it's not dead yet you can hear the bearings a little bit this one's a lot better oh i say that but it sounds yeah this one's dead as well so it's a good thing i'm replacing these guys anyway let's continue Right, so that's not working. I've removed both the bolts, top and bottom, that I could see. But I think there's a possibility that there's a third one stuck down there, which I can't get to. So, um, because I'm going to be removing all of this stuff anyway, I'm going to skip forward and I'm going to remove this pulley now. <sighs> Need a longer arm. Almost. Yes, almost. Yeah, she's loose. There we go. So I've now got this power steering pump pulley removed, but it didn't really help me much because this guy is still stuck. I somehow thought this will be one unit, but it isn't. And as you can see down there, that pulley for the alternator and this air conditioning is held on with Allen bolts. So I could keep on stripping back or I could just say, you know what, all this stuff is coming off anyway. So let's just get that done. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's just get all of the belts off. 
So to get the tensioner off, I need to get the circlip off. So once that is off, I think I should be able to slip the tensioner off the belt and then we can move forward. Yes! One circlip and then a ring. Let's go up top and see if we can slide the tensioner off. seized on there pretty good. We'll also replace that roller. So, all right, pulleys are off, belts are off. This was a massive amount of work. Um, as you can see, it's incredibly dirty in there. Um, let me show you what I've got on the workbench. So this is the roller for the tensioner. It actually sounds okay, but I'm replacing that as well. So that one's being replaced, that one, that one, that one. And then these guys just need to be cleaned up. You can see there's a little bit of rust in there, which I'll treat. Um, but once that's okay, then I think we are all right. So um, what I'm going to be doing in the next episode is I am going to take off the cam cover and we are going to remove the camshafts and the Vario cam mechanism because I also want to service that, make sure that's all fresh and new. So uh, enough work to be done. And uh, sneak preview is that the 924 Safari is home. So we will also be working on that in the coming weeks. So if you want to be reminded of the update on the 924 Safari, make sure you are subscribed if you are not yet and hit that bell notification. And also, guys, if you like this video, please leave me a like. It really does help me out. The YouTube algorithm is really thriving on likes at the moment. So the more you like, it doesn't cost you anything. The more it helps me. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.